Well, just weeks ago, they were celebrating the liberation of the southern Ukrainian city. Now, civilians are fleeing Kherson. Shelling has been particularly intense in the wider region in recent days. The country has faced a blistering onslaught of Russian artillery fire and drone attacks targeting vital energy infrastructure. Repair crews across the country are still scrambling to restore heat, electricity and water services. Well, for the very latest, let's cross live now to our Ukraine correspondent, Gulliver Crag. Gulliver, you are now in central Ukraine, making your way back from the wider Kherson region. Just talk to us a little bit about why, what life is like for people who are still there. Well, it's very much uh, the landscape after a battle in Kherson region. We were in an area to the north of uh, Herson City. You can see destroyed buildings, destroyed bridges, blown up cars on the side of the road everywhere. Signs of quite elaborate Russian encampments uh, and trenches that the uh, Ukrainian soldier that we were with told me had been their sort of bases. And uh, we heard lots of stories about the intense fighting that went on during the liberation of Kherson region. The scene in the village that we visited was uh, one very much in contrast with what we're seeing now in Kherson city, which has come under intense bombardment. There, people were not leaving, but just beginning to come back in dribs and drabs, but having very, very emotional reunions and actually feeling in a way relieved at the state they found their homes to be in. Several people told us that they had sort of written off their homes, decided that from what they had heard about the intense fighting, they expected their homes to be completely destroyed and instead came back to find that the damage could be repaired and were sort of setting to work, uh, beginning to repair that damage. But it looks very much as though those who will be returning to these villages are older people, not so much uh, younger people with families. It's very unclear whether any schools there will reopen. So these people, you know, most of them over 50, were very much saying that they were now in their smaller communities going to try to renew life there and pull together and try to help each other out as much as they could. And separately, Gulliver, Ukraine is accusing the Kremlin of reviving the genocidal tactics of Joseph Stalin. What exactly is Zelensky suggesting? Well, so um, yesterday, Ukraine uh, commemorated the Holodomor every year in November. They have a day when they mark uh, this famine which killed an estimated 4 million Ukrainians in 1932 and 1933. Historians widely agree that it was a deliberately engineered uh, famine uh, engineered by Joseph Stalin. There's some disagreement about to what extent Ukrainians were singled out as targets because other peoples in the Soviet Union suffered too, including Russians, but also notably Kazakhs. But uh, the consensus in Ukraine really is that this was a deliberate attempt to wipe out uh, Ukrainian uh, nationalism, to wipe out the Ukrainian idea uh, of Ukrainians uh, being against the Soviet Union and against Russia, and as such, a form of genocide against Ukrainians. And uh, a lot of people in Ukraine today think that Russia is now trying to commit genocide against Ukrainians in a different way. Volodymyr Zelensky made the comparison between hunger in the 1930s and uh, darkness and cold. Now, with these Russian airstrikes taking out Russian uh, Ukrainian electricity and heating systems, of course, the numbers of victims uh, at the moment, thankfully, are nothing like what they were at the time of the famine in 1932 and 1933, but a lot of Ukrainians feel that their the trauma is, is continuing and are drawing these kinds of parallels. And Volodymyr Zelensky also drew a parallel, um, a different one in a way, between Russia's use of famine as a tactic as he saw it in the 1930s and what's happening now uh, with the way that Russia seems to be preventing Ukraine from exporting grain and therefore exacerbating hunger in um, Africa and other um, poor countries in the Middle East, for example. Okay, we'll leave it there, Gulliver. That's our Ukraine correspondent, Gulliver Craig.